Hello and welcome to the Creating and Sharing OneView Watch Lists tutorial. OneView Watch Lists are collections of items that match user-defined criteria. They enable users to define information to which they would like to be alerted. For example, a user might want to be alerted to outstanding tasks that they need to do or thresholds that have been passed, such as batches in error or backordered sales orders. Watch lists are very simple to create and use and are built upon queries. When you create a OneView watch list, you may have the ability to share it with others. In order to create and share OneView watch lists, your administrator must give you permission to do so. For more information on setting up security for OneView watch lists, please see the JD Edwards Enterprise One Tool Security Administration Guide. Since OneView watch lists are based on queries, you must either set up a query to gather the data for which you want to create the watch list, or use an existing query to which you have access. If you plan on sharing the watch list, the query upon which it is based must also be shared. For this tutorial, we will use an existing shared query when we create our watch list. To add a new watch list, access the application form and version that contains the query from which you want to create the watch list. We are in the OneView Equipment Work Order Analysis Inquiry application, and we are going to create a watch list based on the existing query entitled Overdue Work Orders 1. First, select the Manage OneView Watch Lists icon, and the Watch List Manager tab opens. Leave the default value, Create, in the Name field. If you like, you can enter a description for your watch list. This field is optional. The warning threshold is also an optional field. Enter a value here that signifies the number of records at which the watch list appears in bold font. We will enter 3. If you like, you can also specify the number of records at which the watch list appears in red font by entering a value in the critical threshold field. This field is also optional. We will go ahead and enter 10 here. Open the Advanced Options Collapsible section to see more options. You can specify how often in hours or minutes that you want to run the query and refresh the watch list data in the Refresh Interval field. You can specify the maximum number of records to return in the Max Records to Return field. Both these fields are used for performance considerations and are limited by your system administrator. If you try to enter too large of a number of records or too frequent an interval for refreshing, you will receive an error. We will leave 60 minutes in the refresh interval and 200 in the max records to return field. The query to be used field is required. Select the query from the drop down list that you would like to use for this watch list. Remember, the query needs to be shared if you plan to share the watch list that you are building, so be sure to select a shared query. Once you select a query, selection criteria for that query appear in the Query Details box below the field. Select the Save icon. Enter the new watch list name in the pop-up window. We'll call our watch list Overdue Work Orders 1 and click OK. You have now created a new watch list. If you go out to the watch lists menu, you will now see the new watch list under the personal heading. This watch list is only available to you. Notice the watch list is in red font because it has passed the critical threshold that we set. To share the watch list, you must have the appropriate permissions as mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial. For more information, see the JD Edwards Enterprise One Tools Security Administration Guide. To share a watch list, you must request to publish it. The watch list must be approved and shared by the appropriate party in order for it to become available to other users. To share the watch list on the Watch List Manager tab, in the Watch List Name field, select the watch list from the drop-down list. 
Again, the selected watch list must have been based on a previously shared query when it was created. Click the Request to Publish icon. At this point, the watch list must be approved. If we go back to our watch lists, you no longer see our watch list under the personal heading. You now see that it's pending approval. Let's say that another user has approved our watch list at this point. When we sign out and back into the environment, as I just have, we will now see the watch list underneath the shared heading. And there it is. Once a watch list is shared, it must be reserved before you can update or delete it. Click on the watch list to go into the application from which it was created. Select the Manage OneView Watch Lists icon to open the Watch List Manager tab. Select our shared watch list, Overdue Work Orders 1, and you see that the Save icon is now grayed out. In order to make changes to a shared watch list, you must first reserve the watch list. When you are finished making updates, save the watch list and use the Request to Publish icon to republish the shared watch list with the updates. You have now learned how to both create and share OneView watch lists. This concludes the Creating and Sharing OneView watch lists tutorial.